There are so many theories to play up when talking about the fight against Boko Haram. They say they are an Islamic sect, but we call them mere insurgents because they have taken peace, they have taken love and joy from so many homes. Welcome back from that quick break. It's time now for us to discuss, and we welcome you on facebook.com forward slash GMNS School TV. You can tweet at us your questions and your thoughts at GMNS School TV, at Oliver Modi, at Enna underscore Alfred, and at Zoe Chinaka. Good morning, Nigeria. And joining me to discuss this theories and the way forward for the Buhari led government is Professor Tony Afejuko. He is um, as a research analyst as well as a columnist, and sometimes he wears the hat of a political analyst and security expert as well. Thank you so much for coming really early and joining me on this conversation. Pleasure being here. Thank okay. you. Okay. Like I said, you're the busiest man after Buhari traveling up and down. But you wrote an article um, way back, as back as. Um, let me just let me leave out the date and just get to the article. So you titled it A Misreading of Boko Haram. And reading through that article, it actually backdates to the previous administration. If you're bringing this article up now, is, are you saying to us that there is another misreading of Boko Haram by the new government? I you to answer that question. I will say yes and no at the same time. Okay. Yes, in the sense that we don't actually have the antidote to Boko Haram, no matter how hard we try. You see, if we go back to the past administration, as I said in one of my previous articles, particularly the one you just referred to. Okay. No columnist, no individual has written, made comments or remarks on Boko Haram more than my good self. I say this with every sense okay. of humility oh, okay. and responsibility, I must say so. You just called me a security expert. I mean, because you must yeah. have done so much research for yes, you to feel I, close to the subject. Yes, and everything that I've said... Is playing out. Yes, regarding Boko Haram, the activities or inactivities, everything has come to pass. So what did you say exactly? I think it's best for us to let the people know what you said. Uh, initially, I told the former president to tackle Boko Haram as trunk. She didn't give Boko Haram any space at all before the insurgent group, the insurgent group will, will become what they have become. Because we were not in government, so to speak. They didn't take, they didn't take me serious. Or they didn't take us serious, all those other people who shared, you know, your sentiments. My, my sentiments, my everything regarding the group. They didn't take us serious. Or even they took us serious. You know what security votes uh, all of our the federation from the national government to the state government. Mm. Nobody knows how much they vote. You know. You know, when you talk of security votes, we don't know how much they spend. They don't want us to know. Mm. So the more this thing goes on, this rubbish and nonsense regarding Boko Haram goes on, the more money it's been spent. it is. So much money was voted. You know. and the, even the soldiers, the commandants, the top echelon of the, of the military. Yes, we don't know mm. why the more money, or, you know, the government puts in the way the less you know, results it's supposed to get. Mm. So Solomon must begin on there. Mm -hmm. That those who want this thing to go on are still sponsoring. Are sponsoring no matter what you put there. You know, so, and so that, Speaking that, of uh, sponsorship, level, sir, do you believe that this is still a political agenda somewhere by someone or some party or someone even in government still or out of government? Do you believe that there is still that attachment to this sect? Because 
we, a lot of people thought that, you know, that was a major stronghold for the campaigns to either swing whichever way it did swing to. And looking at how everything has played out, do you still hold on to that sentiment that it is a political route? There is a political route somewhere. Well, political roots, selfish roots, economic roots, religious roots, everything good again. You see, if you create a monster, don't try it. You don't know how it will end. Once they start enjoying what they're doing, no matter what you do, if you even want to stop, apart from what, what I've said, they say no, as it, as it were. You see, uh, let me say this, but with some, my tongue in check. Okay. My late uh, friend, Ken Sarawiwa. Okay. You know, when he was agitating against exploitation and oppression, of the minorities in Ogoni land and by extension, the whole of the Niger Delta. One of the things you know, they said he tried to do was to form this anti inquisition Marx government, you know. Like a re I, I, rebel. I, group. Say, I, say, I, will, I, I, say, I won't I won't call it rebel. But there, anti, there will be dissidents yeah, in yeah, any which way. Yeah, you, you, you get the point. And then one of the things you know they said they said was that those in government within the state and outside, and even when it's ethnic groups who were supporting the government, were vultures. And they told, to use your term now, the dissidents, the anti government agitators, to go after the vultures. And at a crucial moment of time, when he tried to call them to order, nobody they were complained. out of line. Out of control. They now saw themselves as. The new guys on, you know, on the block. You said that. Power, yes. You said that to buttress the question and yeah. your point, yes, being yes. that this is there is a political route, there yes. is a religious everything, route, every kind every, of route we can find it here. So right route, perhaps right whoever sponsors or whoever is behind this yeah, has yeah. lost control, has that's, lost that, the key. That, that's the point I'm making. That's precisely the point I'm making. And even within the Bukharian group, you have different groups now. You so you don't the, believe it's still yeah, one yeah. faction? No, 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 no. You want to stop? No way. We are too far gone. No. They will ask you, what have we got? Like those, you know, who will tell you that in, 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 in the group. So it's going to take a hell of a time. Can you, you break down the factions? Because we know that during this same similar you know, negotiation process that we might be entering into with the Buhari-led government mm -hmm. and the credible um, source or representative or leadership from the Boko Haram that he's, yeah. ex he's expecting, you know, we had the same drama play out during the Ebele administration, Gulak Ebele administration, whereby it was like a two faction faced with um, this negotiation. One, you know, blooped and then the other yeah. looking credible, but then it was like they were going at each other. Yeah. So can you break that down for us? I mean, how, who will be heading which and what agenda will they be pursuing yeah. apart from the general ideology see, they put out? We've got a point where we are likely not going to have any agreement within this group now. That those who tell who support, you know, any kind of peace move now with government and whatnot, ask you, if we're going to compromise, what are we gaining? Okay. And no matter how you look at it, there will always be those who are in disagreement. You take a position, this is my position. And if there is no compromise, so to say, within, this within the group, mm -hmm. all right, you go your way, I go my way, I start something else. You get the point. And even if the group, the group that breaks away doesn't go by the name of Boko Haram, something else will crop a new name, an upshot of it. So can we, so, can we so, strike a... Okay. So it's a huge problem we're having now. Yes, it we're not so just fighting one evil, monster. No, yes, one monster. We are fighting monsters now who have now various interests. I want to ask yeah. you about um, this, I don't want to call it a brewing monster that we mm. might be looking at with the Fulani herdsmen. We know it, it, it looks like, you know, a crop of another militia somewhere. Mm. And we're looking at the um, Niger Delta militants 
not so happy with the way things are going, and people are, you know, some security experts are, you know, um, speculating that this might turn out to be another, uh. um, <laughs> you know, another chaotic, um, you know, event to handle. But let's talk about this. So, which will be the ideology of these two factions, or maybe three uh, before factions? Before we go into that, let me point of correction. You just use the term Niger Delta militants. I've never seen them as militants. Okay. I know the terrain pretty well. If you knew how the so-called militants started, they were fighting a war against the Shakiris, like overstate creation and whatnot. This is always a problem in Nigeria. When the government needed to do what it should have done, they did not. We're talking about the same thing. No, no, no. Yes, you are calling them militants. They're not militants. It's when you know everything snowballed into you know because, before because I've to, I call them arsonists, murderers, and all oh. that. Then, in order to get public support and internal support, so we are militants. And the difference between the Niger Delta people is simply this: one major difference. You don't really know those in charge. In this Bukharian group. The mm. Niger Delta militants are known. You know who you're going to you the know, table you are, are, with. Okay. They're mainly interested in what? Money. Many of them, the majority of them, I don't mention names. Um, if you've been very conversant with what's happening in Nigeria, they're giving juicy contracts and whatnot. Mm. Now, they've kept quiet. They, they can be easily picked now. And they don't want the money, the millions and billions they've made, and even trillions. To go into the gutter. But that's what makes the Boko Haram yes, sect more deadly. But, but that's what the point I'm making. You don't know them. You, you, you don't. They, 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 I, just, are we really sure that we do yeah. not know them? No, we don't. Because know I mean, the, the Jonathan-led administration then said they are within me, the, my cabinet. They are around me. He does he know them? That was a sense of knowing. Yeah. But who did he pick? I was the first. In fact, I was the first person to say so. That they were everywhere, even within the military. But you don't know them. They are very faceless group. Check how we just, you know, as somebody, yeah, yes, you know, you don't know, even, uh, it's a guess, you know, a, a kind of guess thing. You don't know those, those, those who are actually in control, but you go be the mouthpiece, we are there. So it's a very uh, dangerous thing. It's a worrying yeah. situation. It I'm is. going to, you know, you take out this five remaining minutes of this conversation to yeah. invite the rest of the public. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can reach us on 012 778 Two double seven two one nine six and zero one two triple seven one nine six. We also have our toll free line on the screen. Mm -hmm. Call us and share your thoughts on this fight. I mean, between Buhari led government and Boko Haram, and then we're looking at other insecurity, um, you know, units, insecure units that are making us feel insecure here in Nigeria. I mean, we're looking at the Niger Delta as you call them, Asinis, I, I stay with the name, the public oppressed name, militant, and then we're looking at these. Um, Fulani herdsmen. Let's talk about that. Is there no fear that this can crop up from just having a cattle field fight to something else? The Fulani herdsmen thing, that is a different kettle of fish, totally. Yeah, you know, people take advantage of different situations to create, you know, a different uh, problems and whatnot. You see, before Borari came on board, mm. Remember what the PD people were saying, that Buhari was a major sponsor of Boko Haram. My people say, that's a bloody lie, a, a bloody smear campaign against the man. That's it. Even with Buhari, like you, I said, came on board, and any time, you know, to be on board, Boko Haram was to be a very muddy problem. That's a very big mountain to climb. Now, what, what are we saying? And I also predicted, rightly, that Boharam people will keep on changing their style, their mm, tactic. Stressing. Yes, you know, initially when they started, it's like uh, gorilla, you know, people, uh, gorilla fighters and whatnot. Then when they saw the underbelly of the military, they went cross military and they penetrated everywhere. I'm glad you mentioned strategy because that's our yes, next yes. line of discussion. Yes. Stay with us, Tony yes. Professor Tony Apajuku is still in the building and he's throwing you know insight into the war in Boko Haram. We're heading straight to the news center where Victor Ororo is standing by for the bulletin too.
Now, the hottest topic right now trending in Nigeria might be the president's visit to the United States. Of course, two presidents meeting for the way forward, especially when he talks about insurgency. How do we beat this? Now, sitting with me to discuss this and throw more light on how we can tackle Boko Haram headlong is Professor Tony Afejuku, and he's been telling us some truths that backdates even two years ago. Thank you, sir, for staying. Okay, let's continue with the strategy. Welcome back, guys. You can be part of this conversation by going to facebook.com forward slash GMNSchool TV, tweeting at GMNSchool TV, or calling our lines on the um, screen right there. You see it, 012-77196, and 12 Call us and share your thoughts. How can we tackle Boko Haram? This is really sad. Now, I'm looking at the breaking news here. More than 50 people dead in suspected Boko Haram attacks between the border of Cameroon and Nigeria. And then another really sad story, permit me to take this as well. Boko Haram attacks the home of the new army chief. What is happening? Now, we saw their strategy going from um, the guerrilla style mm -hmm. to religious houses, mm -hmm. mosques, churches. Mm -hmm. Now we are sending them revisit that. But going from home to home to these offices, to borders, what is their strategy and what can be Buhari's strategy to tackle them? Uh, first, uh, let me say this very quickly. It's not something actually we should say in the open. Hmm. It's not the best thing for Nigeria now and for Buhari. Okay. He, unless you call him up and tell him, oh, well, how best. I won't call him, unless you call me. I'm not, you hmm. know, I, I, I'm not. A You're an yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, I do. He has his own uh, people, those who he thought and still things can do. But I'm not in government, I don't say anything, but it won't be right for me to Just open up feel. on that. that. That being said, let me say this very quickly. When it comes to strategy, I tell you, though, no strategy is right. Mm. There's no strategy that is right. Just tackle from the head, the throat, Anywhere. everywhere, the back, the front. As we say in my place, you know. Mavu wo we Yeah, you know. Uh, in fact, in fact, me guale. I said it. Je de e guale ku. Ah, but much will be me In other words, if you want to, you know, kill a snake, mm. it doesn't matter. How you, Ooh, how you kill the snake. So long as the snake is dead, yeah. whether it's killed by a woman, use a long stick, or whatever, the thing is that the snake is dead. So what does the so, government do? So I've just said, it's not something, because there's going to be a counter. Hmm. These guys are very smart, you know. They've tried all kinds of things. They've been changing, okay. And that's, uh, a friend, you know, told me just yesterday, an Igbo friend of mine. Okay. That we're talking about Boko Haram, Boko Haram. Boko Haram is not as deadly as Gowon was during the Civil War. Mm, that's deep. Yeah, you know, he told me that. Like Bob. Mm. You know, and he told me something that was eloquent and persuasive. But I don't want to go into that here. Yeah. That, for example, during the Civil War, Gowon, I don't know, I call him. Went to the marketplace, many places will be mm, kidnapped, mm, mm, bombed. Mm. That book, you know, he's not done that yet. As it were. So, what are we talking about? I mean, that's some, uh, some theory. Okay. I don't agree. Other things. Crop but then up. the government so, is very careful not yes. to take such guerrilla styles because of, mm. I mean, from the past government and even now, I'm just yeah. studying Buhari's body language, mm. not to go out maybe to the Sambisa for it because people actually do live there. To an extent, so citizens might be endangered. Story, story, story. That's just oh. your story. Mm. They've done all kinds of things, as it were. I don't, you know, they've done all kinds of things, as it, as it were. If you've been following keenly what has been happening, there's one guy who just wrote a book, you know, on Smith. You know, he used to be AFP correspondent in West Africa, which to me is a very blemishing book, <laughs> as it were, what he called, and what Amnesty International have called it, the uh, uh, yeah, no, which for me is bullshit, uh, 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 you know, if you allow me to use that term, you know. 
Not exactly, yes. yes you are, if you mm. allow me, you know, mm -hmm. with your kind permission, the permission of the audience. Yes, forgive us. Uh, yes. But, but sir, uh, okay. Yes, the point I'm trying to make, you know, is similar that the government, the military, they've done, they've been doing all kinds of things to cow Boko Haram. But so far, the right strategy has not come their way. That's, okay. that, that, that's the point I'm making. Mm. Boko Haram is having some advantage. But then what was Jonathan doing when the past, in the last six weeks he had, he gave his all. What he did to do right that Buhari is not doing that seemed to have really degraded Boko Haram? Oh, <laughs> Jonathan brought mercenaries. Uh, mercenaries from, from has... South Africa, from South Africa. Really? Yes, I don't even know where. So the so-called bravery, the, the, uh, our troops displayed, you know, in, in some bits and order, through the instrumentality of... It was engineered by the... Yeah, yeah, by the uh, uh, mercenaries as well. And f for a pretty long time, our soldiers were running away from the yes, battlefield. Yes, yes. No equipment, money was brought up with said, but nothing. And this guy said, they would not want to go to go and encounter lions with bare hands. That's yeah. what became, you know, so many things, you know. And they are living big, I mean, those services, so much money, so many things so are going on. So should Buhari do the same, so, get mercenaries, if we are going to be uh, uh, running away? The advantage that Buhari has, has now, himself is a military commander. Well, Jonathan was not a military commander. was a lame duck president. Then why are we having deaths uh, every day? Yes, I've told you that they are changing the modus operandi, Boko Haram now. They are not going the way they were going before. As yeah, it really breaks my heart yeah, that we yeah. can't discuss yes, you know, yeah. deeply what yeah. Buhari can do as I, a I retired military yes. uh, major general. It, it's heartbreaking because I'm sure the people want to actually pinpoint, oh, this is what he's not doing right, this is what he should be doing. Yes. Because six weeks into the end of... Um, of the Jonathan administration, we look to be fine. We could mm. have counted maybe just two attacks between six weeks. Uh, and now just within 63 days, we have over close to 700 um, lives lost. Uh, Buhari made a tactical mistake when I came on board. What would that be? The mistake of the mouth. When he said that he was going to tackle Boko Haram has strong in a month. In a month, you, you, I mean, for me, that was a blunder. Then he moved the tactical command to from Abuja yeah, to so, Medigar. And it was okay. Is that so? You won't finish us in a month? Now let's see. Then they escalated. So this Everything. was more of an ego attack. Yes, I know what not. They did that. They didn't need to go about to only give me time. I will, you know, you, you get what I'm saying? That's what I said, blunder. It was okay, fine. And as I said, we don't know who these guys truly are. Faceless. Yes, they are, they are faceless. And they, unlike those who uh, came from the Niger, uh, Niger Delta, people who are prepared to die, mm. no matter what, they're not swayed by money, so to say. Before young girls, this indoctrination, 10 year old girl, Elderly woman, time bombs, you know. Let me ask you this final yeah. question before yeah. we let you go. I know you have to yeah. run. So yeah. we are looking at the president telling us that he will do everything possible mm. to get these Chibok girls back, you know, rehabilitate them and get them maybe back to school. And we're looking at negotiations, you know, with the other hand. Yeah. What? I, I think you can talk about this openly. Mm. Do you think it's a good idea to negotiate with Boko Haram? And then how do you think that the president should actually do everything possible, whether it means prisoner swap or anything at, at any cost to get this Chibok girls back, even if it means him giving <laughs> Boko Haram their members. You want my honest truth? Yes. It is too late in the day to negotiate with Boko Haram. What about the Chibok girls? It's also too late. Wow. That, that's going to be part of the sacrifice. Too late to cry yes. out, but yeah, I, yeah. I want to disagree but, with, but, but, uh, you, with disagree, you, Professor. But, yes. Let me say this. It's unfortunate that, you know, when you are in this kind of situation, some people must pay the price. What I said that these Chibok girls, 
the price you have to pay to keep this country going. It's unfair. But let me say this. Everything I've said is a misreading of the situation. Yes, <laughs> and that's exactly what the title of this conversation yeah, yeah, actually a is. A misreading of Boko Haram. Mis but yeah, uh, permit me to stand you know, on yeah. the side of the law and hope mm -hmm. to believe that the Chibogos will be found. And when they are, we will start reading Boko Haram. Maybe before then, reading Boko Haram correctly. Thank you so much, Professor Tony yeah. Afejuku, for coming. I really enjoyed you know, the insight you've poured out to everyone. Yeah. Um, guys, we continue with that conversation on facebook.com forward slash GMNS School TV, on Twitter at GMNS School TV. It's right now heading to entertainment. Let's let this politics just you know, take a back seat and have some fun. Do stay with us. We'll be right back. So, did you like what you just saw? I know you did. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. If you want to see more, just subscribe to our channel right now.